Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara, and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Greetings and welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere podcast. You are about to listen to a money interview. This is a series that I made with the people who have had the biggest financial impact on me. Each each and every one of these people has inspired a different way of thinking about money that freed me up to create in greater ways. I hope you enjoy this money interview series on the Consciousness Anywhere podcast and recognize that wealth can lead to greater awareness and greater consciousness can also lead to the kind of wealth that works for you and creates the kind of world that you want to live in. Enjoy. How does it get better than this? Welcome to the Money Interview Series. And today I am graciously joined by Stephen Bowen, um, somebody who has definitely changed the way that I think about money, the way that I relate to money. So Stephen, I am I think it's a quite a treat to get to have you on here today and let's see what radical new ways we can introduce about how people relate to money. So shall we jump right, right. in? I like that. That's good. So start right, right from the top. The first question I love to ask every single person in this series is, what is money? Money. Interesting, because we've been looking at this for decades and decades. And the way I describe money, and and particularly to the groups that I do a lot of work with, which is boards of directors and a whole lot of other people, but to me, money is the grease that oils the wheels of possibility. Hmm. So would you say that based on that, that there isn't possibility without money, or it's just less... It fluid. oils the wheels of possibility. It makes things easier, quicker, faster, if you're willing to know how to use it. Ooh, what do you mean if you're willing to know how to use it? Well, most people, when they look at money, they think that it's something to be spent. You have to get it and then you spend it and mm-hmm. then you get mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. and you spend it. The way I look at money is that, um, and it hasn't always been this way, But the way that I'm looking at money have been for probably the last eight or 10 years is that it actually is the the grease or the oil that just makes things so much easier, so much quicker. Mm. So that um, if you want to do something, you can always do things without money. But with money, it's just a little bit easier and faster. I'd say it's a lot easier with money for sure, depending on what it is, of course. And, And my point of view on life has always been, I like my life to be easy. Hmm. And so one of the ways to make my life easy is to actually be in that space where I can create with or without money, but with money, it's just easier and quicker. That was definitely one of my inspirations for having more money as well was more ease. I was at one point, I was just like, my life just has to be easier than this. And one of the ways that I knew I could achieve that was by having more money. That being said, I also had to learn a whole bunch because having money also has its sets of, it has has a learning curve too, which I think most people who don't have a lot of money don't realize. Mm. Um, So one of the things that I, one of the angles I've been playing with for this series is looking at sort of like what we were taught as children about money, how Mm. we've evolved into what our current financial realities are is now. So what were some of the things that you were sort of educated or shown about money as a kid? Well, one of the things that that I did learn about money, and I only got out of this point of view probably about eight or 10 years ago, Mm. was that money was something that was difficult to get and you had to hoard it and only spend it at the very last minute. Now, I got that from my mother, who was a single mother, who uh, would always just be able to pay the bills probably 10 days after they were due, just before they sent the second notice. Mm. 
And I didn't realise I'd picked up on that because I, I was, uh, yeah, I didn't spend that much time at home because I was at boarding school for about seven years. But uh, one of the things I found is that 10 or 15 years into our marriage, I found that I was paying bills right at the very last minute. Mm. Uh, and that to me was a sense of satisfaction and that's a good use of money. Mm. Now, what subsequently happened that uh, again created a whole lot of change in a whole lot of different areas where I started to say, ah, I've misidentified this. It's not about saving money. I will always, so what I'm looking at now is that bills, I actually get quite excited when I see a bill because it shows me that things are working in this reality. And I will set up payments the day I get the bill to be paid the day before the bill is due. <laughs> but I've already set it up and I keep track of and just uh, I'm just aware of where all the money is, where it could potentially come from. So the, the, big, the big thing I found is that um, two things, paying bills was a necessary evil and had to be put off un until you couldn't put it off anymore. So that was one big point of view that I got over and that's made, made that whole area a lot easier. And then the second thing that I learned was that uh, as a child growing up, is that um, money is something that is for survival. And that's something that I grew up. And as, and as a direct result of that, I found, again, until about 10 years ago, I was totally focused on cash flow. I was the cash flow king. So I knew exactly how much cash was coming in, how much cash was going out. I got a little stressed when the, the cash that I knew had to go out, didn't meet the cash that I knew was going to come in. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was a point of view that I had surreptitiously picked up over a period of time. And until I was able to choose differently, now I'm very aware of cash, but it doesn't drive my points of view about things. So can you talk a little bit about, you said, you said that you didn't really change or even recognize that you had bought a lot of points of view as a child from your mom, for example, till about eight to 10 years ago. Can you talk about that changing point? Well, the changing point was, was when mm -hmm. Chitissa, my wife of 45 years, mm -hmm. um, invited me to look at things from two different spaces. We had these fabulous conversations, one of the great joys of being with her. And one of the conversations was, okay, so what would it be like if we were the choosing ones, not the chosen ones. The second part of that conversation was, what, if it, what would it be like if we were needless? What would that look like? Mm. And it was those, the, the start of those conversations that, start, that really got me to look at, okay, so being needless, what does that look like? And being needless of clients, being needless of money, being needless of, doesn't mean you don't have them, but you're, you're, you're not needy. You don't need them to be you. You don't need them to create your business. So we started looking at that and um, that created a series of other businesses as, as well, but from the energy of needless. Mm. And from that energy of needless, our wealth started to grow dramatically. Yeah. I mean, that's a fascinating aspect to this conversation because when you talk about money, of course, there's so many different energies and attitudes attached to just the word money. And need is a massive component of what gets attached to money, but doesn't necessarily naturally go with money. Um, and so if you, I mean, all of you guys out there watching this, listening to this right now, it's like how much, how many you know, corners and crevices of your world is need still attached to the money that is or isn't in your life. And, and so, so what, so what did you notice, Steve, when the need stopped being part of your financial acumen, interest, reality point of view, how did that, or what did what did you notice? How did you notice that money started showing up different? Like you said, you actually started some other businesses after that point and stuff. Can you talk a little bit more about how getting out of the need moved to? Well, the, more the money? most powerful part of that is actually the question: What would it like to be needless? What would it look like to be right. needless? So, the the question is worth way more than any answer you could ever come up with. Right. So, 
we continually, and to this day, are looking at, so what would it look like to be needless in this area? So how could I run our consulting business with boards and CEOs from a space of being needless? And that very conversation started to change things where in the before that awareness that we had that we started to put into practice, um, I bought into the reality that you need clients, so therefore you need to have a large database and therefore you need to send out marketing in a certain way and success equals more of. Now we do less work, we have more money coming in, we've got clients coming to us begging us to use them, so now we've become the chosen ones. Sorry, we've become the choosing ones that are looking at whether or not we want to actually work with and a lot more attractive to choose because we all know, like, what? How does it make us feel when some when someone is super needy of us? Does it make us want that person around more, or does it make us try to get away from that energy of need? And essentially, like, when we're being needy towards money, money's actually going to respond to our energy, and that's one of I think the big things to get about this thing that you're indicating about questioning your attitude, your psychological attitude towards money. In this case, need. What does the energy of need actually, number one, what's the fundamental base point of view you have to have for need to be like your primary driving force around money, that there's lack, that you don't have enough. So when that's the fundamental base point of view, that's exactly what you're going to create. And that's what's so dynamic. The exciting part about this, Shannon, is that once you start exploring what it would like to be needless, it takes you off into all sorts of different directions. It's, it's actually really exciting. So what if you could have clients without that sense of need? What would that look like? Now, what would I put in place to create that? What parts of the consulting business would be would change? Um, mm. Money, what would it like to be needless of money? What do we need to put in place so that we can be needless of money? So it's not just thinking of it and hoping it will happen. It's what do you then put in place to actually right. create that? The choices and the actions. And that was actually somewhere a question I was heading towards with you was sort of like, which I feel like you're starting to touch into a bit energetically is like what most, what's most exciting to you about money? Um, it's not the, it's, it's not the money itself that it's, is exciting. Right. It's right. the lack of lack that's, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah so not having that sense of lack and it's not because of the money the, the, the not having a sense of lack a sense of abundance a sense of prosperity that comes first that came first that's where that's why we started asking these questions what would it like to be needless um what would that look like what if, what would it be like if we were the choosing ones not the chosen ones which is another form of being needless and um from that came all sorts of explorations of all sorts of different ways of creating business to the extent that people from outside looking in say, my goodness, aren't they innovative? Well, we're doing it from a different space. Can you talk a little bit how getting out of the needless point of view led to business innovation for you? Um, it's, the day that I chose, after a conversation with Chutissa, the day I chose to be needless, I immediately that same day started changing all of our um, all of our collateral, which is website um, sending out. You know, a lot of in in the business mm. that we're in, a lot of people respond to requests for proposals. Well, we don't call ours responses to requests for proposals. We call ours invitations to work with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and no one, no one in in fifteen years has ever questioned why we call this an invitation. <laughs> No one has ever, ever questioned it. Well, why do you um, call it? Why do you call it an invitation, Steve? Because I'm inviting them. I'm not responding to their invitation. Cool. I'm the choosing one, not the chosen one. And the being needless of it again. This is something that's occurred over a number of years. But now we're looking at. Well, we've created so many streams of revenue. What can we do that will change the paradigm of business that takes money out of the computation? And so we've now started to create, and literally just today we've created another 
another component of the business where we're putting together, you know, one of the things that you just and I were talking about today, for example, is, you know, the conscious governance business that we run is about creating a platform for people to see that there are different possibilities and that my gift in that is to assist the CEOs and the chairs of boards and directors themselves to, to, to actually understand that their gift to the world are the choices that they make that create the future. So from that then came a series of conversations that we have. We don't charge for them. We get money. We get so much money from all sorts of other different areas. There's some things you just don't need to charge for. And this is actually the platform because the other stuff, that, you know, the money looks after itself. The money is there. It's one of the things I always say is that there's an infinite source of money out there. And the only reason that you don't have more in your bank account is your point of view about what it looks like and where it should come from. That, that, that statement, that thing you just said was, I actually heard you say that or something similar to that, probably like, Jesus, was it nearly 13? Could have actually been 13 or 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing you say that and that literally went in. That was one of the turning points for me with money. And that's why I asked you to be, all the people that I'm asking to be on this money interview series with me at some point or another said something that literally radically changed the direction of my financial prowess, ability, consciousness, etc. And you said that exact same thing. I've literally heard that in my head since there's money everywhere. I've heard your voice saying it, there's money everywhere. And literally, as soon as you said that to me, I started looking around and I was like, wow, there's literally money everywhere. And I, and as soon as you indicated it, then I could see it as well. And that was huge for me because whenever I was starting to go into like a lack point of view or stress or strain or need around, oh, where's the money going to come from? I heard your voice, there's money everywhere. And literally it would help me get out of the need, the lack and into the what actually allows me to receive the money that's everywhere. And it's possible to actually receive the money that's everywhere. It's fascinating what can occur when you change your point of view around money. So thank you for that, Steve. Thank you. I just want you to know that like, I actually heard you say that. Yeah. (laughs) Money, money, money. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you know what it is? Jumpstart your receiving and money ease at shannon-ohara.com backslash money where you will find classes, exercises, books that I have personally used to make myself a happy millionaire. What's it going to take for money to come to you? Ease and joy and glory. So cool. So that's that was huge and that's a huge gift. And aren't we, I feel like we're, aren't we so fortunate that we know that. And if you're listening to this and watching this and you feel like you can hear us saying there's money everywhere, but your life experience has definitely not shown you that there's money everywhere. Um, so let's, let's get into... So can I just say, Shannon, please. can I just say for the people listening to this, there are two elements to that is if, <clears throat> if you believe that there's not money everywhere, then what you're actually saying is that it doesn't show up in the way you've decided it should show Thank up you. and it doesn't look like what you've decided it should look like. So, and again, you can go into some of the insane questions like, well, what if money wasn't money? What would that look like? What if money showed up in ways that I don't even know existed? What would that look like? Have I put the things in place that would alert me to when money's showing up in ways that I'm not familiar with? So let me ask you, would I, lo- would I, you know how you said that when you got out of the needed or uh, the need point of view with money, you, you said like, well, a bunch of stuff changed in the business, but it also, what you've said a couple of times now is you guys have a bunch of different revenue streams. Can you talk a little bit about how you get from the knowing that money's everywhere and that it can show up in a million trillion different ways into the actions, the specific actions that you take that allow the money to accumulate, to come, to process through your life? So if you have the point of view that money is everywhere, what does it look like? You start to look for what it looks like. So what does it actually look like? What are the, you know, what are the the ways that other people generate wealth? Which ones of those read for us? Now, what do we need to know about that? Now, 
12 months go by and you say, okay, so what else don't I know in this area? What else could we be looking at in this area? What, I love that. what haven't we asked in this area? And then another 12 months goes by and you say, well, that seemed so difficult last time. It's really boring now because it's just humming along. What else is there out there that I don't know about wow. that we should talk about? So it's that continuous and also having no point of view about how long it takes. Hmm. Sometimes it takes today. Sometimes it takes 12 months. There's a, um, there's, a, there's a quote I've seen where the CEO, and I, it's hysterical, I actually don't know his name, of Amazon, Jeff something, thank you, is asking Warren Buffett, like, Warren, why don't more people, like, you know, learn from you and do what you do? He said, then Warren Buffett says, because no one wants to get rich slowly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I can so relate, and that's why I love that statement of yours of... <laughs> Even no matter how long it takes, no, like even if it's slow, because that has been my experience um, that it has taken me a long time to, to learn, um, apply things and then watch how it works and Mm -hmm. let that educate me along the way and let it keep teaching me and showing me. Um, And one of the, I love this thing about I mean, I would basically saying like you're constantly creating, constantly educating, actually interested in how money can be created and where possibilities can be created, which I, to be fair, I think is a really big missing piece for a lot of people. Like they maybe they want money, but they're not that interested in it. So they don't tend to educate themselves, which is part of my impetus for creating this series as an education from the people who have educated me about money. It's sort of like, these are the golden gems that really changed my life. And, you know, I'm on my fifth million, you know, so I keep clocking over it every year as I get, I get more and more and more money. But what also comes from that is greater and greater and greater financial education. Um, One of the things that I just realized that I'm great at is business, but I'm not great at investing. Investing is not something I have a huge amount of interest in. I feel intimidated about it. Whereas my husband is actually quite interested. So I've sort of paired up with him to put our talents together so that, you know, so this is the thing you're talking about, about learn, keep learning. Where does money come from? Okay. If it's everywhere, then what are the ways in which we can actualize it into our lives? Investment is one. Business is one. Begging is one. <laughs> you know, we all, that's, there's so many ways for money to come into our lives. And, and in each one of those, there's infinite ways of actually creating that. So, you know, when people talk about investing, they think, oh, I don't want to do the stock market. Well, what if it wasn't the stock market, but it was the stock market, but mm. not the stock market you know about, and certainly not the way that everyone else who's not making money thinks about the stock market. Ooh, another good point. <laughs> be, be aware of who you're listening to about money. Do they actually know how to generate and create money? I think, and that's that's actually one of the things that I was a really big focus for me creating this series was I wanted to talk to people who do have that are high net individuals who do have financial acumen. Uh, Cause there's so many people out in the world giving advice who maybe haven't quite achieved what you're looking to achieve. True. So I feel like you've given so many incredible insights. And this question is just sort of maybe the icing on top of the cake. It's like, what's your favorite tip or tool around money? Like what, do you still have like a daily go-to or a, a, or something, a tool or a question that you use on yourself in a, on a regular basis? I, I keep reminding myself to be the space of needless. And that for me helps because a lot of the work that I do is in the consulting sphere and to be needless and to have no point of view. And that allows me to not only work with clients, to create business without having to function like everyone else does. And it enables me to know what to say, what not to say, when to say it, when not to say it, when to do something, when not to do something. And money is attached to that, but it's not because of the money. And that's huge. It's not because of the money. And so like if money wasn't actually the issue, you know, in these money interviews, if money wasn't actually the criteria, the issue, 
What are we actually talking about? Hmm. And we come back to the way I view money is it's the grease that oils the wheels of possibility. Mm. <laughs> and it just makes life easier. But it doesn't, it's not the reason for life. It just makes it easier. So if you've got an easy life, it could be even easier. If you've got a hard life, well, you could make it easier. So it's that point of view that, you know, if anything's hard, if you change your point of view about it, it might be complex, but you can actually make it easy just by changing your point of view. And therefore, the actions or non-actions that come from that, the choices that you make, have got that energy of creating ease in your life. Exactly. And it's, that's a massive, that's something I think is so interesting is to also, you've said the word ease now several times and is ease as valuable to people as money? You know, we all know the story of the miserable millionaire, or Mm. if you don't know this, some people out there might've even been the miserable millionaire, you know, and it's sort of like, if you don't have, if you have all the money in the world, but you don't have any ease, or you don't have a sense of possibility or joy, what revenue, what currency is ease? Hmm. And what if stuff like ease was a resource that is, valu- that is valuable or even maybe even more valuable than the fiat currencies, the money that we talk about today? Is the future of finance, will the, will the future of finance also include and value things like ease and possibility. And what if that's not just an airy fairy attitude, but a practical relevance for money? Mm. And the, the ease part of it is something that only you can choose. No one can choose it for you. And if other people see it as hard and complex, let them see it that way. But for you, it's ease. And just for you, just for fun, Never tell anyone, just be that ease. So that's what, that's what you know, we've found, or what I found certainly with the, the work that we do. And I've got, had a, I've got a couple of CEOs working with me now um, to undertake tasks that I don't particularly choose to undertake and they're doing it. Uh, they've picked up on that ease and it's like the world's open up for them because now they've said, ah, okay, so there is a different way of being. So... Yeah, what if that's one of the greatest gifts that each of us can be to the world, to be that ease so that other people can then choose that if they so choose? Beautiful. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for taking the time out to come on here. And I know I speak for everybody watching this now and everyone who's going to watch this in the future. Thank you so much for your willingness to share your easy earned tools and your hard earned wisdom around money. it's super exciting. I'm going to link Steve and his wife, Chutissa Bowman, are prolific. They are extremely generous with a bunch of awesome resources. I will link below in the show notes, in the description, uh, all of your guys' websites, books, and places that if you guys are interested, please go check uh, Steve and Chutissa out if you actually want to get educated about not needing money, but having ease with money. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Mm